Well, we're back on CSBK TV and we are broadcasting from Saint Eustache, Quebec at round four of the Canadian National Superbike Championships by Parts Canada. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome to our studio this morning Mr. Jerry Marshall. Now, a brief introduction will tell you that he was the very first number one plate holder, the very first Canadian champion in motocross. He was also the CMA president for quite some time, the representative of the Federation, the uh, World Federation, FIM, for road racing from Canada. And there was a period of time where he had a motorcycle radio show from in Montreal. Jerry, a pleasure to see you, sir. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Frank. This racetrack is uh, well known to you. I have had a lot of fun here. This is uh, uh, really a lot of fun every time I come here. We used to have the Brimaco series here, which was a very prestigious series in Quebec. Mm -hmm. We had six or seven tracks going on, and uh, this was one of them. And uh, it, it was just a lot of good racing and a lot of interested people, interesting characters and they were just as serious on winning as they are today. This is a confirm or deny now, Jerry. I heard a hot rumor yesterday that they actually used to run this, this motorcycle race track backwards to what we're doing now. When we first started here, we used to were running in a clockwise direction. And I seem to recall, we, we even tried to have the starting line over on the other side at the beginning of the drag strip. Okay. But then it was a little spooky getting into the tight corner at the end. So that it, it was changed pretty early to the starting line, more or less where it is now. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I won a, a part of the uh, one round of the Brimico series in 1970, and riding vintage in 2003, I rode counterclockwise as you do now, and I won the period two super vintage lightweight class that day. <laughs> so if anybody else has won two reasonably prestigious races, you know. Yeah. Um, I'd sure love them to get a hold of you or the Autodrome just to record that they have also won in each direction. Just to confirm it. Do you want me to talk about some of the exciting Yes, as a matter of fact, that was my next lead in, is, is the, that there are some very funny and exciting stories from back in the day. Well, we had pretty fast motorcycles. They didn't handle too well, and maybe the brakes weren't quite as good as they are. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> But anyway, the guys were interested in winning, as we all were, and we often left the little skin on the side of the, on the bottom of the track, you know, because, uh, dare I say, Saint, you crash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we didn't, nobody hurt themselves, as I recall, but we did bang ourselves up a bit. But in the rain, this was not a good place to be. The oval of the uh, stock car track is very, very slippery. And the starting line being on this side of the track, which was the popular side, when we were running clockwise, you'd start and go into the oval, part way around the oval, and then come into the infield, much the same configuration as you have today. But at the finish of the race, as you're coming out of the S's from the far end, you're really flying, and you had to put on your brakes throttle off and get on the brakes in the rain before the finish line. In the dry, you could make it, but in the rain, you had to get off the throttle and onto the brakes. Well, Dan Sorensen, I recall firmly, was following Mandy Radboard, and these are two pretty hot guys of the day. And Dan is also, well, both of them have been recognized as masters of bow sport in the last couple of years. Yep. These two guys, Mendy in the lead, Dan in the second for the last half of the race, and I guess Dan decided, I gotta win one. So Mandy throttled off before the line, Dan kept the throttle on, went past him, crossed the line first, throttled off and jumped off. <laughs> Just plain jumped off his bike. And the bike went into the, into the wall at the oval and ricocheted off in a similar manner out of everybody's way. Mandy was on the inside line, so he was clear of it all. Dan curled up in a ball and bounced off the wall, but he kind of skidded along the wall, so he didn't come out on the track, and he never got run over, and he won the race. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the kind of stuff we did here. Jerry, you've been coming to this track for decades. Have you ever seen this establishment in such good condition? Not at all. But of course, I've never seen it owned by a guy who was the manager for years of one of my close friends, Yvonne Joamel. And so he's interested in motorcycle and he understands that things should be presented well. We are, of course, talking about Alan LeBron. Yes. 
and his, his publicity director and whatever, Buddy Ford is another guy who knows motorcycles, whose dad, I never had the pleasure of racing with his dad, yet I think he's the same age as I am. I guess I was riding motocross and he was doing road racing dirt track. He a fine dirt tracker, a damn good road racer. Uh, and I stepped to the off-road stuff, uh, which I could do okay. I didn't want to get shamed out by guys like Buddy Ford Sr. Jerry, it's been a couple of years where we haven't come to Quebec. Boy, I'll tell you what, from this point of view, I'm real glad we're back. Well, as a, an enthusiast of the series, I am glad we're back. You're back. I say we're back because I've been a motorcycle fan for years, and national championships and things have always fascinated me. I was happy to work in the international thing to help the guys get more money and get safer tracks and all this stuff. But uh, Canada's where I was born, and Quebec's where I chose to live, and, uh, and I'm happy it's back, and especially when I think of what we had years ago, which was really damn great stuff, you know, really. Well, it certainly produced a lot of talent. And, uh, oh, man. Yvonne Jermel, I might even mention, Yvonne used to, when he, before he became really famous, although he was getting pretty damn well known, uh, he would be sponsored by a local somebody on a fairly stock bike, and he'd come up with this track and just to just to make us all look bad. <laughs> yeah, well, there, and there were years and years when Miguel was racing. When I remember hearing the PA announcer saying Yvonne, Yvonne, oh, he's yeah. still he's, he sunk into the uh, in the American psyche. I think Super oh. Frog, they called him. Oh back. yeah, you wouldn't get away with that then nowadays. He was no, no, no. Yvonne was over at the Moto Legend in France last month and uh, had a great time and they recognize him, they still remember him. I bet they do. And, and Miguel went over with him because he was not in the greatest of shape these days, mm -hmm. but uh, he went over with uh, Sophia's wife and Miguel met them at the airport in Paris and accompanied them and he told his father, he said, when it comes time to si sign autographs, he said, because I know somebody's going to say, who's that old man with Miguel? <laughs> and he says, when it comes time for you guys to sign autographs, I'll just slip away, he said, so you can have some fun. Right on. Jerry, it's been a distinct pleasure chatting with you on air and we'll continue this conversation once we shut the camera down, but uh, a real pleasure to have you, sir, and I hope you don't take offense when I call you a real piece of history. I'm becoming, I'm beginning to feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Marshall, as we chat from St. Eustache. We'll be back in the studio in just a little while.